Hi everybody. So this is my tour of conservation fisheries down in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, they probably do some of the best conservation work in the country. I mean, they're on the front lines of go gather some fish, bring them into captivity, breed them, reproduce them, and uh, reintroduce the babies. I mean, they can turn a population of a couple dozen into a couple thousand in a year. So they are doing amazing, real, like, hands-on conservation work. But yeah, I'll jump right in. So these are spring pygmy sunfish. They're from a dammed area in Alabama. Uh, these guys have a super limited range uh, of just one little tiny population. They actually went extinct in 1938, but then were rediscovered in the 1970s. With how limited their home range is, uh, this is just an assurance backup colony of those pygmy sunfish, uh, just in case there's any oil spill or a de train derailment in the local area. That could end the whole population, which is a pretty common theme for fish here. Um, these are Barron's top minnows, which again have just a super limited range. Um, you can see they have the spawning mops in here on these guys, and underneath they've got all the eggs and larvae growing out. It was really cool to see all the different breeding strategies and uh, with the different kind of groups of fish that they work with. The mad toms, the uh, darters, different chubs and uh, shiners, how everything's breeding differently. But yeah, these are all their egg trays here. It was pretty hard to film some of the fish here, but this, here's a absolutely beautiful, uh, this is a male of the Baron's top minnow. But yeah, these are another one with just a super limited range of, when it's really just like one or two watersheds, that's when these species can easily get wiped out. Um, at one point they did have an entire locality of these, uh, they went extinct in the wild, the entire locality has been in this, this building more than once, I want to say it's happened two or three times. Next up, we have leopard darters. These guys are absolutely beautiful. All the persina darters I love. They're just the biggest and friendliest fish in the creek. In the next video, we'll see some tangerine darters, and I'll really show you why I love them. But here you can see all the all this rack is just dedicated to leopard darters. Every rack was pretty much dedicated to a different species of fish. All the adorable little baby darters here. Then they have kind of the artificial tile as a nice slate rock shelter. For these guys. Then these guys were super cute. This is a pygmy sculpin and similar to the uh, spring sunfish. Uh, these guys are, they want to stay in their one little tiny spring is where they're used to. Uh, and they were saying the temperature there very rarely fluctuates just a degree or two from 65 degrees year round. Um, so condition wise these guys need real specific conditions and if just one, I mean environmental accident, a farmer, a local farmer uses too much fertilizer, pesticides, could just throw off, destroy the population of these guys just because it's so concentrated in one area. Uh, and that's why it is so important to have places like conservation fisheries with assurance colonies and just building the population up to where if you wipe out 90% of the population in the wild, that 10% and over the next few years will repopulate. But yeah, so cool to see all the little life stages of everything from the egg to the larva. And these guys were really beautiful too see the banding and the orange. If there was any of the protected fish that we, I wish we could have in aquariums, it'd be these guys or the next one. But yes, these here are probably my favorite fish in the building. These are spot fin chubs, and you can see the males are absolutely beautiful. Uh, iridescent blue. I would love to see these snorkeling in the wild in a creek. Uh, I believe they're a Tennessee native. Uh, but yeah, the males are absolutely awesome. If you look here, these are actually like they spawn between rocks. So they've got these stacks of tile um, in the tank and the adults will actually launch their eggs into the tiles. Then the biologists will pull the tiles out, separate them, and then uh, wait for the fry to hatch. And then once they're uh, free swimming, they can remove the tiles and start raising the babies. Yeah, all the different breeding strategies was super cool to see. Here you can even see see the eggs that they just launch they said they launch them up to four inches into little cracks in the rocks and the little babies swim out when they're ready as you can see the adults are spectacular those males such a unique fish and they're absolutely pumping these guys out i mean they had i want to say four or five rows high of just tank after tank all over the place um, but then next up we have Probably the prettiest fish. Um, I didn't get to see them in full spawning color, but uh, these are blue. But yeah, here's a better look. You can see he's a little bit past his prime, but absolutely beautiful colors. All the darters are, are just such amazing looking fish. 
that really should be more popular in the aquarium hobby. Uh, next up we have Roanoke Log Perch. Uh, I believe these are another Persina. So you're a little bit bigger, a little bit more personality on these guys. And they are cave spawners, it looks like, because they have these uh, terracotta pots all over the place for these guys. Hard to get a good look at the adults, but again, they're producing so many babies that they're always some out and about to film. Next up we have the boulder darter. You can see how they like to breed there in their little caves. Uh, but these guys are, have a couple threats in the wild. Um, one is they dammed the river where they're near, um, basically flooded all those small creeks and streams that they used as habitat. Uh, but then in the upper reaches of it, it was attached to a reservoir where they drain the reservoir um, every so often and then that big burst of cold water goes into the creeks and streams and basically either kills all the adults or puts them off breeding. So those combined, definitely not a good mix for these guys in the wild. Um, but you can see here, Conservation Fisheries is doing an amazing job. They're adorable. These little guys, they've got big eyes. I love their little faces on all the darters, really. Next up is the Yellowfin Mad Tom. Conservation Fisheries has been working with these guys for a long time. Uh, they were actually declared extinct right when they got described, pretty much. Um, but then they did find a population. Uh, but these guys, the population was determined to be too small to even collect adults to breed in captivity. Um, so instead, Conservation Fisheries was allowed to collect eggs, and then they raised those eggs to breeding adults. And now, I mean, since 1986, has been working and breeding with these guys. You can see there was a little cherry shrimp in there. They use those as tank cleaners in a lot of their systems. But you can see they are having very good luck breeding these little uh, yellowfin mad toms. Quick correction, these are actually Carolina mad toms, uh, which is another species that conservation fisheries work with. Uh, they're mainly dealing with uh, population fragmentation, along with pollution and things like that, and invasive species um, is really causing their decline. But yeah, Carolina mad tom. Raising all these fish can't be easy, uh, but the biggest step, especially for raising young fish, is uh, having a good live food supply culture going. Uh, and we got to see their plankton room. Uh, this is uh, Derek who works there. This is his his creation. Um, just lots and lots. Every tank had a different type of Daphnia. Uh, you can see cherry shrimp there for cleaning tanks. Micro worms. All kinds of just different types of plankton and food um, to help raise all these baby fish. Um, but this was fun too. This was uh, Derek's personal, personal collection here. If you're going to be keeping U.S. natives, you might as well get a couple for fun. Um, I believe these are uh, Japanese pale chubs. These They look like a striped shiner almost. Uh, this is where my names might be wrong, I'll be honest. Uh, but I believe those are pale chubs. And these here are fiery back shiners, another U.S. native. These guys were absolutely beautiful. The white fins and then the orange nose and tails. Really unique color. But yeah, it was really fun to see see everybody's personal projects around too. There were a couple little display planted tanks with some interesting goodyids from Mexico. Um, fiery back shiner. Yeah, okay, I got it right. They're real pretty. My friend actually took some uh, fry home from these guys. So maybe we'll get an update on me getting these one day. Uh, because Derek was actually nice enough. Uh, these guys aren't protected. These are just for fun. Um, so he gave my friend some of these fiery back shiner fry. And I took home these spectacular looking rainbow shiners. I got some fry from these. Um, they're from the southern US. I mean that doesn't look real. It doesn't look like a fish you'd find in a pet store. It looks so unreal. But they're a uh, they're US native. Southern US. Absolutely spectacular. I mean red and blue. And apparently these are the non-breeding colors. Apparently the breeding colors actually look a little bit worse than what they look like on the day-to-day. -day. Just absolutely iridescent vibrant but yeah I got some fry from those um, then these are some more blue mask darters that were just looking beautiful as we were wrapping up the tour I had to had to film some more the orange the orange color I want to see a fully fully colored up breeding adult because that orange is like nothing else um, but yeah that actually wraps up the tour of conservation fisheries uh, thank you for watching, and please support them. They do a lot of events around Knoxville, too. They have a lot of fundraising events at local bars and things, but uh, I'll leave some links to their uh, social media uh, down below. And, uh, yeah, please...
please show some support for them. Uh, on the next episode, we actually went out with the biologists and did some seining, so we got to see all the really cool fish out in the wild, too. And, uh, yeah, still lots more to come. Thanks for watching, everybody. Will do.